Okay, so let's go through the process of creating users and groups in Active Directory. Now, I've already got my server manager up. It is working on loading here. And I've got a couple of tools that I can use to manage Active Directory. And the ones we'll most often use are going to be Active Directory Users and Computers in the Active Directory Administrative Center. We'll go through users and computers for this demonstration. So I'm going to click on that to open up Active Directory Users and Computers. And it looks like our auto refresh failed. Oh, but that's because my second server isn't up. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so Active Directory Users and Computers. Um, so let me go ahead and maximize this. And we're going to go to Users. And I am going to create a new user. So I can right click on the container that I want it to go in and do new uh, user. And I can do that on either a folder or an organizational unit. I can also use the new user button here, or I can right click here and go to new user. All three of them get you to the same place. And that is right here. So I'm gonna create a couple of users here. I'm gonna do Diane. See if I can spell Diane. Uh, last name of Wilson. So I'll put in first last name. That generates the full name. And then the logon name. I'll just do D Wilson here. And then we're going to set a password. And then your option down here is user must change password at next logon. And that's normally something you're going to want to do. That way when the user logs in, they have to change their password. They're the only one who knows their password. Okay, other options here, user cannot change password, which obviously is incompatible with that and won't let you do both of them at the same time. Password never expires. And you can create a disabled account. And you'll do that sometimes if you're creating accounts in advance. So I hired somebody, they're going to start in two weeks. I'm going to go ahead and create their account now. Since I've got a few minutes, I'll just leave it disabled. And then when we start, all I have to do is enable their account. So that's what that's for. All right. Now, in your user creation, that's actually about all there is to it. We right click create the new user or we click on this button. Let's go ahead and do one more. Let's do James Winston and J Winston. So his login is going to be J Winston at your domain name. And then set the password. And leave normally leave all of these settings the same. Now you'll sometimes do password never expires. User cannot change password if you're setting up a managed service account. But that's something we'll deal with at another time. So most of the time, you're going to go ahead and leave user must change password and X log on. All right. To manage an account, you just double click on the account. And now you actually have a whole lot more options. So you can set more additional information like the telephone number, email address, description, office. You can set their address, account information is where the login is at. You can set the hours that they can log on, what machines they can log on to. Unlock their account if they've managed to lock it by entering an incorrect password too many times. Profile, we can set user profiles and logins, home folders for the users. We tend to do a lot of these things through group policies now. Telephone information for them, organizational information like job title, department, company, who their manager is. Um, we can set remote control options, which normally is only used for remote desktop. We can set a profile if they use remote desktop services. We can set their dial-in options. We can set environmental options. And again, a lot of these are going to be managed through group policies. And then we can set what groups they're a member of. Now, we haven't created any groups yet. We'll do that in a minute. Common things that we're going to do when we're managing users. Well, we'll frequently go in and we may update name information if a name changes. Uh, we'll frequently do account information. Um, we'll have to unlock their account or set a password option for them. Um, a very common thing that happens is people lock themselves out. So for that, we'll right click and reset password. We can also disable an account here. If we want to disable them, let's say they're going on vacation, we want to make sure that nobody uses their account while they're on vacation or something. All right, so that's creating a user. Now let's create a group. Right, same thing except that here we're going to use this button or right click and new group. And I'm going to create a couple of groups here. I'll 
we'll create one. We'll create a management group. So I'm going to do management. And then the group scope and the group type are things that we'll worry about a little bit later in another class. For the moment, most of the time, uh, global is going to be just fine for the group scope. And most of the time, we're going to want security groups. Distribution groups are really only used for Microsoft Exchange and email-based systems. So security groups means we can give security rights to a group, and this is frequently what we will do. We will set NTFS permissions for particular groups, and on those groups, we'll, or we'll add users into those groups, and that's how we'll manage permissions. But in order to do that, they have to be security groups. So we'll hit OK, and let's go ahead and create a new group here and we'll call this one oh let's do production okay now I want to add um, James and Diane both to the production group and I want to add Diane to the management group so there's two different ways we can do this I can do this from the group or from the user so let me start with the user I'm gonna double click Diane and I'm gonna make, go to member of and everyone is a member of domain users by default. I'm going to add her to the management group. So I'm going to type management and then check names. And if I find it, it'll highlight it and we're all set. I'm also going to give her administrative permissions on the domain. So I'm going to add her to the domain admins. Now that's not one that I created. That's one that's already built in. Anybody who's a domain admin is an administrator in anywhere in the domain. So domain uh, or Diane is a member of domain admins, which gives her rights to all of to manage all of the servers and all of the workstations in the domain. And she's a member of the management group. And when we get to setting file permissions, we'll do so for the management group. So we'll hit OK. And I just added her to two different groups. Now, if you want to add a single user to multiple groups, it makes sense to do it from that um, from the user. But sometimes I want to add multiple people to a single group. So let's say I want to add both Diane and James to the production group. Well, in this case, it makes more sense to go to the production group and go to Members and Add. And now I'm going to search for Diane check name semicolon James was the other one and check name and again it will identify them if I or if I do it correctly it'll identify them by finding their whole name and underlining alternatively I could have done Diane semicolon James and check names and you should find both of them at the same time and I always like to do the check names you technically don't have to but I like to just so that I know that it found what I wanted and I hit OK now you'll notice that a group we have the members tab which identifies members of the group we also have member of so groups can be members of other groups and this is actually something that is really really common best practice is we put users in global groups we put global groups into domain local groups and then we give rights to domain local groups um, so <clears throat> uh, we'll look at that a little bit more farther on down the road where we're, when we're dealing with NTFS permissions but for the moment I wanted to make sure that you knew how to create users how to make one of those users an administrator and then how to put those users into groups